welcome back. Right, today on the bench we've got a load of iron, a load of transformers and with some of these, some or all, I'm going to hopefully build an amplifier, my next valve amplifier. The next valve amplifier I want it to be different. After, test, after doing a lot of tests on the 807 amplifier that I built, I'm firmly of the opinion that A2 or AB2 sounds really good. It, um, specifications wise and testing wise it, it looks terrible as far as total harmonic distortion goes, but it sounds good so I don't really give a bugger. Uh, so it basically it's going against most, if not all, amplifier design precepts. Meaning that usually you go for as little total harmonic distortion as possible. But the thing is, if you're going to build a valve amplifier, right, it's not very efficient. And we're after that sort of valve sound. So why not try to get as much valve sound as possible? Right, the other thing, the other thing that's going to be different about it, maybe, if I can get it to work, is that ages ago, before I knew a lot about anything, I bought all these um, the line output valves. So we've got, I think these are six one four six. Move that out there. And that's another 6146, whatever you call it. And we've got 6BG6GA, they're uh, line up valves. Got four of them, new old stock. Oh, yeah, 6146. Got a load of them. But these are the ones I plan to use if I can. Right, these are. CV2799, which I think is the same as a QQB0420. Uh, the transmission tubes made for Class C telegraphy, really. Not really audio frequency valves. They've got a very low GM, 2.5 milliamps per volt, I think. But, uh, and the other thing is that it makes them a little bit tricky, both the screen grids are tied together, but that doesn't really mean anything, doesn't matter. Got a couple of anode caps, and recently, by accident, bought some nice ceramic holders for these, so basically then what I would have to do is make some top caps for these, but I know, a man with a lathe. That's the plan, to use a couple of those. So basically they are, there's two beam test loads in there, rated at 10 watts each. So that should do 20 watts. Yeah? Right, well, here we are with the power supply. Basically I've, I've not, I've done, <coughs> basically what I've done is what I always do, which is just make a prototype, just using wood and things of that nature just to get a temporary sort of settle. Now then, there's obviously different ways you can go to design a power supply. There's this way, you can see there's lots of calculations. You can use a, um, a, a piece of software called PSUD2 on Duncan Amps. Now that's, I've just run the simulation there. And that is the results. And I don't really know what any of that means, to be honest. I'll shut up waffling, get all this banged together, and then I'll probably go and edit it, because already I've got, what, 14 bleeding minutes of me waffling on. So I'll get that together and come back. Right, here we go. One crude power supply knocked up. So I'm going to knock it up. I'm going to start it upon the variac first. So we've got a primary here. We've got a one amp fuse going into a primary of our uh, mains transformer. 
Secondary comes out, another one amp fuse into a bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier is made up of obviously doubled up um, diodes. Each diode is rated at 800 volts. That gives us what 1,600 volts. More than enough. There is a formula for walk it, uh, working that out. I will go into more details later. That comes out there into our reservoir capacitor, two 700 microfarad capacitors in series. As you notice, we've got 100k bleeder resistors on each capacitor. Same on the other side. Positive goes there into the choke, out of the choke, into our smoothing capacitor here. No, hold on, that's the smoother, that's the reservoir. Apologies. Right, let's start it up. Okay, 61 volts at present. Let's crank it all the way up. I'm not going to keep it up here for long because the capacitors aren't properly reformed yet. We've got a total of 440, so we must be dropping about 10 volts across that choke. Let's pop a load on it. The load is about 63 milliamps at the moment. That knocks us down to 430. And this is a ripple on our second capacitor. Not too bad, that is 0.1 volts per div. And we've got less than a hundred millivolts. We could be better than that. That's not brilliant. Well, here we are. Next day, lunch time. We sort of knocked together an output stage, as you can see. There's the two CB2799s or QQB03-20As. Double beam tetrode transmitting rails. And this one has danger, health and safety hazard sheet. C danger, health and safety. Well, that. Yeah, what that says. Right, we have 430 volts. HT, we have minus 22 volts on the grids, something smells like it's burning but I can't find out what, and we have 250 volts on the grid 2s, and at the moment this isn't pulling down, I don't know, they're not working right, so if you go over to this meter here, I'm going to put it on one of the cathodes. I won't touch that. Twenty-one millivolts, right? On these sense resistors here. This is a one ohm resistor. Now then. This should be at quiescent. They, these valves should be pulling about 25 to 35 milliamps each. Therefore, we, we should we, we should be seeing double 22 easily. We should be seeing 44, right? But we're not. We've got even less on this one got 12 on that one. Why? I don't understand why. Alright, snowy day in January. Uh, second time it snowed this year. So as a consequence I'm a uh, coat on, scarf, woolly hat. Looking very swish. Anywho, back to the amplifier. We're making progress. It's took me a few days to get to um, get the driver stage working. 
to drive these CV2799s. To be honest though, I think using these output valves with the power supply that we've got and the output transformer that we've got is a waste of bloody time. Uh, they, they should be more like, that's 4300 ohms primary impedance, pardon me, it should be more like 10k or 20k. And the, what do you call it, the HT should be lower. So I think we're wasting the time, but we'll give it a go. I did drive it yesterday uh, and got something out of it, but it was very distorted. It wasn't very good. Anyway, moving on. This is me driver stage. This is me voltage amplifier. So what we've got, we've got a CG, where is it? 6CG7. Uh, voltage amplifier. We've got a 12BH7 phase splitter driven from a constant current source there. And then we've got another 12BH7 driven from a dual constant current source here. And that means that we can put a negative, we can drive these or, or any uh, output amplifier stage we should be able to drive that into class a no uh, class a b2 sorry because what i've got if i just take that off there pop that onto the oh no where are we no we should be on here let's watch out what you're touching there mate right so now that's on our Right, let me point you here, sorry. I'm not doing very well today, it's this hat, it's driving me mad, it's really itchy. We've got minus 80, minus, let's call that minus 20 volts on these heat sinks here. And basically, because it's a constant current source, that is going straight to our cathodes, and the cathodes, when we do join it to our output stage, will go to our grids. So what we've got there, that's a DC voltage obviously, is what we're going to get on the grids of those on our output stage here with me. Right now let's have a look what we have in terms of AC. We've got 4.27 there at the moment. Hopefully you can see that. Fifty-five. We've got fifty-five volts or MS. And point you over to the old silly scope here, and that's looking quite dandy, isn't it? Uh, it won't go down any further than that. Will it? It will. Right, well, that's no good, is it? Right, so that's looking cushy, isn't it? I'm just going to turn that down before it explodes. So the next thing to do then is to connect it to that McGubbins there. But as I said, I don't think it's going to be any good. I'll show you why I want Right, here's our load line for the QQV whatever, 2CB27. You know what they are. Now then, when I drew this the other day, I didn't take into consideration the maximum power dissipation. See this horrible line there? That's our maximum dis dissipation of 10 watts. Uh, per anode. So basically in parallel they should be capable of 20 watts here. Yeah? Now then, I'm no expert on designing amplifiers as you probably know. I'm, I'm getting a bit stuck here but basically what we do, as I mentioned before, for class B we do a quarter of the primary because that's what the valve see, sees in class B. Well in this case Follow that line going all the way up there. That's what the bulb would see. That is going way over our maximum power dissipation. And this is our class A line, and that's going way over. So, as far as I know, you can go over a bit, but not that bloody much. But this is where it gets confusing, right? Because this is a transmitter valve. It's meant to be driven in positive grid, which is everything above this load line, uh, this, these lines here, right? Well, if that's the case, and we're, and we're trying to keep within a maximum 10 watts maximum dissipation, then you'd only have this little bit here. Which is no good, is it? Because, as you can see, look, 
these grid lines are falling off which means that our anode voltage and anode current is falling off which is going to put a hell of a strain on our uh, screen grid so fuck knows what's going off there and here is a bit more clear one as you can see I mean it's just <laughs> but what we're going to do we're going to try <coughs> driving them see what happens if not I've got some 6146s which I think will suit the output transformer and maybe do better than these bloody things. I think these have got to be left for another day. Anyway, let's connect this together and see how we go. That's 2.1 volts RMS and it's really horrible. So, uh, yeah, why? Why is it doing that? Well, it's just, I don't think the load's right. We've got 250 volts on the screen grids being provided by our trusty power supply. And everything's cushy here. The signal going in, this is, well, I need to really repair my scope because we can't see what the signal going into the grids is doing. Yeah, look, that's a uh, signal going into the grid. Zzz of these uh, bells here so that's fine it's just a signal coming out I'm pretty sure that the load is wrong I think if we was to increase our load on there we'd get a better signal let's do that I've changed the dummy load to a 20 ohm so obviously our uh, primary impedance is going to be raised I can't um, I can't remember by how much I'll work it out in a minute uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, so that's our output. We've got 2.2, as you can see, that's starting to distort. 3.3, not looking good, is it? That's as far as I dare take it. No, as predicted, these valves are no good. At the moment, I just what I did change. I changed the. Let me turn it off before it. Uh, I changed the bias on the output valves to from 20 volts minus 20 to 16. It didn't really make a difference. It, it did. It cleaned up the sine wave at low, uh, at low power output at about one volt. But no. So what I'm going to try next is some. 6146s which I think will be happier with this load and happier all round so I'll go and do that and we'll get back sitting by the warm fire editing this video on these QQV 03-20As and uh, just trying to tie up the end of the video they didn't work out I tested a few of them they didn't test very well I tested them for emission so I bunged them ended up bunging them back in the box for another day until I get a better suited output transformer. Right, that's it for now. I'll get this edited. Take about five hours to upload for you lot and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-da for now.